Hey Honeywood, it's been a long week, but as promised, this video here is going to be about the hip hinge, okay? The hip hinge movement is where deadlifts come from, kettlebell swings and so on. Why is it important for me to talk about it? Once again, we're going to talk main movement patterns, okay? So your foundational movement patterns, as well as posture, okay? And as well as longevity. So, in life we are very forward dominant, okay? So, people who, for example, love running and so on, we're very quad dominant normally, yeah? The only problem with that is that you've got a large muscle group at the back of the legs called the hamstrings, okay? Function of the hamstring is to flex the knee, okay? So to bring that leg up, you can feel them activate when you do so. And also they help the glutes to re-extend the hip. So for example, when you come up from a squat, okay, the hamstrings are also assisting. Hip extension, okay? A lot of that is going to be a combination of glutes and hamstrings. Okay. From an aesthetics point of view, why do you want to work the hamstrings or hamstring related movement patterns? Because they're going to assist you to get a nice shapely glute and to lift it up a little bit. Okay. So specifically, we talk about deadlifts or deadlift variation, single legged deadlifts and so on. Anyway, I don't want to get lost in too much talking. Okay. So, Going back to the squat pattern, we already said that it's just two simple movements, okay? It's chopping the hip, so a tilt of the hip and dropping the hip straight down. You can feel the quads activating, come back up. How do you work the back of it? You do a hip hinge pattern, all right? So you wanna load the hamstrings. Is this way that I start my clients with to understand the difference is this. I get them to place their hands on their thighs, okay? And what we wanna do here, we don't want to drop the hip, we want to slide the hip backwards, okay? So when you start to practice the movement, what you're looking for is for the shins to remain vertical. So if they're going forward, we know we're going to a squat pattern. So hands on your thighs, okay? And we're going to slide the hip back. As soon as you start to do this correctly, you can actually feel the hamstrings extend and stretch like an elastic, you're loading them, okay? Movements like this, okay? You're also talking jumping, running, and so on. The hamstrings also help to decelerate the knee when you're running, so very, very important muscle group to work, okay? Right, so, going back into it, you can just start practicing this simple drill. Fit should be shoulder width, slightly wider, okay? Just don't go too wide, otherwise it's gonna be hard to activate, okay? From that position there, all you want to do is just slide, the hip back and up. Now, when we do this movement, what we want to stay away from, once again, is losing that lumbar curve, okay? So your natural back curve, okay, you wanna keep that during that movement. So as I slide the hip back, I wanna keep a nice flat back so I don't want to start to hunch over and so on. Typically with beginners, I'll see this going on with a loose position, okay? So there's actually no hip hinging going on whatsoever or if they can keep that curve, that nice flat back, they won't soften the knee, so they'll keep the knee stiff and push everything back, okay? That's also not how you do it. So, soften the knees, okay? Slide the hip back and back up, cool? I think of my neck as an extension of the spine, all right, so broomstick, try to keep everything level so I'm not doing that either, okay? You can also go through drills, for example, where you can place somebody about a foot away from the wall, facing away from the wall, okay? So we've got this imaginary wall here, and you know you are hinging when you can touch a wall with your butt, okay? Without actually sitting on that wall, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's have a quick look at one of the exercises that you can do, we'll start talking about it anyway. The deadlift, and we're gonna combine it with the kettlebell, okay? So, Got a kettlebell here. Kettlebell deadlifts are great for beginners because it allows you to center the weight with your center of mass. So, you know, it's a lot more beginner friendly and uh, it's gonna prevent you from straining your back when you're first letting the movement. Okay? So first start, two cues. I get people to stand directly over the kettlebell. In this instance, you wanna go a little bit wider with your stance because you got a kettlebell in the middle, okay? From that position there, once you've got that hinging of the hip backwards, hamstrings are active, okay? 
is simply look for the kettlebell to there. Okay? Then all we want to do is re-extend the hips. So if you have a look, I've got vertical shins, the butt is back, hamstrings are loaded, the back is nice and strong. Okay? So creating a nice tight core by pulling the shoulders back and down, keeping the chest out, you might say it. Just a simple matter of up, and then once again, slide that hip back. Now, if your movement pattern is correct, you'll be able to return the kettlebell back into that midline there without even looking at it. Okay? So, if you end up here, what did you do? You drop the shins forward, you started activating quads, you lost the hamstrings. Not a head, not a deadlift anymore, it's a squat. Okay? So, picking it up again, I'll do it from the side. Standing directly over the kettlebell, keeping my eyes forward, slide the hip back, look for that imaginary wall. Hands are directly underneath me, okay? And up to down. Good. Now, I don't want to get too specific, but the length of your joints, okay, is going to determine as well how you should perform an exercise. When you are looking at deadlifts, you don't want the shoulders to be lower than the hip. Why is that? Because if I'm now here, A, I can't maintain spinal position, but also all the stress is going to be on my lower back because that's the fulcrum now, that's the lifting point. Okay? So my hip should not be higher than my shoulders. You've got three points that you look for. You've got the shoulders, the hip, and the knees. Kind of like a V, all right? And that's the position that you want to look for. If you can't get down that far, keeping that nice position, you can use a little stepper, okay? to lift the kettlebell onto, so all of a sudden you don't have to reach as far before you got that kettlebell and then you can lift safely from there. Alright, I've been doing this for a long time so I can reach it, no drummers, back into position, extend the hip, back, up, back, up, cool. When you re-extend that hip forward, it's good to tell your black brain to contract the glutes hard because you're training that new movement pattern. Okay? So the hamstrings and the glutes work together to re-extend the hip and you should contract the glutes hard at the top. Cool? So, do you have to go all the way down with the kettlebell? I would say yes when you're first starting out because if you keep holding that kettlebell up and down without resetting it, A, it's easy to lose form, B, you continue to place the stress on the back. Okay? So, set it down, get yourself back into that nice tight position, okay, nice flat back, hamstrings engaged, butt is back, vertical shins, deep breath in, up, and extend the hip. So once again, hip back, and up, not down, and up into that squat position. Easy to tell, because you feel the hamstring stretched out, like an elastic, ready to explode. Working your hamstrings, it's gonna make you faster, Help you jump higher, turn quicker, and so on. Okay, lots of benefits. Also, brief intro to one of the exercises that I will be teaching you is the kettlebell deadly, uh, sorry, kettlebell swing, which is an awesome exercise to get your cardio on and also help strengthen the lower region. Okay, as well as create tightness through the core. So, in this position here, it's going to show you three. That will be the end of this video. If you want to learn this swing, you're going to have to watch. Okay? I'm going to position them nice and tight. Pull. Five simple swings. What you saw was explosive extension of the hip. Okay? Repeat that for a few hundred reps, and your glutes are going to start to get tight and functional, which is what we want. Thanks, Honeywood.